maxillary scent roll incisor, large silver point, large post, full coverage restoration, previous root canal surgery, and persistent periapical disease. Stick around. Find out how I manage this case and the outcome. I'm Bill Madera. Welcome to my channel dedicated to clinical endodontic education. Tooth number nine, diagnosed with previous root canal treatment and asymptomatic apical periodontitis. The original root canal was completed decades ago, and there was a history of root end surgery performed also years ago. The patient wasn't clear exactly when. The patient was referred to me, they were asymptomatic, and they wanted to discuss the options they had moving forward to try to save this tooth. The coronal view of the CBCT scan confirms the presence of the apical lesion, but the real value on the cone beam scan here is this sagittal plane. It really gives a good scope as to the location of the lesion and the prior surgical approach. We can tell that the original apical surgery was done either several decades ago or by a clinician that practiced with a traditional old school technical approach based on this 45 degree bevel that was placed on the root apex. Our modern apical surgeries are suggesting a zero degree bevel and making this flat. The intraoral evaluation shows no signs of swelling or infection. And again, the patient was asymptomatic. The patient was very motivated to save their tooth. So when we talk about the options moving forward, we're limited. With all the work that this tooth has been through prior, there's really not a lot of great options for tooth retention, and they're limited to two. Either we consider full retreatment, remove the restoration, remove the post, remove the silver point, and try to internally treat this tooth, or we consider a second surgical approach. Based on all the risks and benefits of each procedure, and after discussing these with the patient, we made the choice to move with the second surgical approach as our primary treatment option of choice. I planned my surgical flap based on the scar from the original surgical approach. The tissue was reflected, and I exposed the apical lesion, and it was a mess. I cleaned that apical lesion up pretty easily, and the challenge for me at this point was how am I going to provide a really nice solid apical seal? Because a surgery was done already in the first place, and we know that the etiological variable here which is causing the refractory disease is internal leakage around the silver point. So my strategy here was to take an ultrasonic and trough around the actual silver point about three millimeters coronally from the apical direction. And I was going to pack bioceramic material around the silver point to minimize or in fact decrease that leakage to get that successful outcome. As I was troughing around that silver point to try to create space for that bioceramic material, I saw it move. And when I saw it move, it started vibrating in the direction apically and I saw that it was going to be able to be removed. I got really excited when I saw this and I continued with my ultrasonic instrumentation as if I was trying to remove an instrument because the silver point began advancing further and further apically to the point where it just came out. I didn't plan for this. I got lucky and sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. But now that that silver point has been removed, I can address that primary etiology directly. I took 2% chlorhexidine on a regular standard irrigation syringe and I bent the tip in an angle that would allow me to introduce it from the apical direction into that root canal system and I irrigated internally. After I went through the irrigation protocol inside the root system, I then bent paper points in a similar fashion and began wicking up all the extra material and drying that root canal system from the apical end. After that canal was irrigated and dried, I took BC sealer and bent the tip and injected it into that root canal system from the apical direction to the level of the post to fill that pulp canal space. I then took some BC putty and capped off the apical end. I then placed a bone graft in the area, covered it with a resorbable membrane, reapproximated the tissue, and used 5 vicral interrupted sutures to close the site. This is the final radiograph. You can see how wide the material is there in the apical area. And this is where I started troughing around the silver point before it decided it wanted to come out. And that's why we see it a little bit wider in that area. This is what it looks like 10 days post-treatment after the sutures were removed. I'm pretty pleased with the healing. This is what it looks like at one month. Patient was asymptomatic and tooth was functional. One year goes by, no history of pain, no history of swelling. Tissue still looks great. The radiographic exam shows no signs of periapical pathology and nice integration of that bone grafting material. I was able to get this patient back at three years for another follow-up. The patient had remained asymptomatic, the tissue still looks healthy, and the tooth remains functional. 
We can also see there's minimal scarring there in that area where we made the incision line. The three-year periapical image shows a nice PDL formation around the apical area and no signs of apical pathology. The three-year cone beam scan also confirms our findings on the periapical image showing nice, healthy periapical attachment with no signs of any pathological findings whatsoever. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video presentation of mine today and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all of my future videos. I'm Bill Nudera. Thanks for watching.